Now, you know the rest of the story here. Esau sells his birthright, which was very significant, at least it should have been to him, for a bowl of soup. But he's called a cunning hunter. Now, you might think that's a good thing, but there's one other time that phraseology is used, and it's in the book of Genesis, and it's used in Genesis chapter number 10, and I want you to see where it's used. And Cush begat Nimrod. Ever heard of Nimrod? I know we think that was a cut-down name, but Nimrod was quite a guy, really. I'm going to go here in a minute. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter, cunning hunter. Same Hebrew phrase there, before the Lord. Now, he's not saying before the Lord is in a good thing, like he was God's warrior. No, he's saying that just when you have a rival and you want to face your rival, you want to come before your rival, that Nimrod went aggressively before God and said, I dare you, God. And, and so he was this mighty hunter against the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter, there it is again, against the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Remember that place? The Tower of Babel, all right? And, and, and Erech and Akkad and Kalin, Kalina and in the land of Shinar. And out of that land went forth Ashur, uh, Asher and builded Nineveh. Remember that city, a wicked city, and the city of Raboth and Kalath. This guy, this is right after the flood when Nimrod is born. Very early, first or so, second generation after Noah comes off the, off the ark from, I think, the descendants of Ham. And most people think, by the way, that Goliath was a descendant. Most people think that Nimrod was the first giant of the post-flood era. Uh, Judaism, uh, you know, this is what Judaism teaches, that, you know, he, that he goes and he builds... The, builds Babel, which the Bible says. And what do you know about Babel? It's called the Tower of Babel because it's tall, right? Now think about this. Judaism, in, the, in rabbinic Judaism, they teach this, and it's just food for thought this morning, that the reason that they built the Tower of Babel high is because Nimrod wanted to tell God, okay, you wiped us out once with a flood, but I'm going to build a building so tall that no matter how much you flood the earth, I'll still survive. Interesting viewpoint, isn't it? Now, he didn't believe God because God already said, I give you a rainbow, say I'm never going to destroy the earth with a flood, but you know, he, he wasn't believing the word of God. But the Bible tells us that Nimrod began to go and build these different cities, Babel, and then ultimately uh, Nineveh. And, and what we know in early uh, biblical history, that this guy, Nimrod, became the very first dictator. He became the first one to put conquest upon other men. Put him under the yoke of bondage. He built this local, you know, the, probably that day, the, the, the global empire of its day. Now, Judaism teaches that later in Nimrod's life, because Nimrod would have been a contemporary probably of Abraham. This would be Esau's grandfather, okay? Well, later in Nimrod's life, after he had established all these kingdoms, that he used to enjoy walking out in the cool of the fields, uh, and he always kept with him two bodyguards, two mighty men with him, as he was an older man now. But, uh, and while he was out on a walk, another mighty hunter, another cunning hunter was hunting the hunter. And guess who that was? Esau. That Esau stalked, stalked Nimrod and ambushed him from behind and with one swell of his sword, pah, off with Nimrod's head. And then he had this epic battle with these two warriors, and he slew both of the bodyguards in a long-lasting battle. So Esau has now killed the king. He's famished. He limps himself back home to the tents of his mama and his daddy, and coming into the campground, he comes into the tent of his brother, Jacob, who has a cup of soup there cooking on the fire. And even though Esau could have taken 20 more steps around the corner and he could have, could have got his soup for free, but Jacob says, with no deception, hey, you want this soup? Trade me the birthright. Sell me the birthright and I'll give it to you. And Esau, I mean because he just killed the king, thinking to himself, I own it all. What do I need this stupid Jewish birthright thing for? And he despised his birthright. 
Fascinating, isn't it? 